Hello there, welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another hat making project today. That's right, we're back to a little bit of millinery. I promised I would show how I make the small, like miniature pillbox style hats that I then cover in trimmings like I was showing in that last video. I had uh, the feather poof hat video. That all those feathers are attached to a small black velvet pillbox style. I think a lot of times when you say the word pillbox, people think of like the big 1960s Jackie O pillboxes, but before that they were much smaller and like worn tilted, which is how I prefer them, honestly. So that's what I'm going to be making today. I'll make another identical, actually, black embossed velvet little miniature pillbox hat, but we are going to be using traditional millinery materials to do this. We'll be um, both blocking part of the hat and then also just cut and sew. You've seen me do cut and sew buckler millinery here on the channel before because that is how I made the miniature bonnet that I made here on the channel, so I'll put that up in a card here um, if you haven't seen that video. So I'll be doing the cut and sew buckram and wiring as well as I will be blocking the hat tip, the top of the pillbox today on a hat block. So this is our first kind of dipping our toe into using a hat block here on the channel. This is kind of a, an easy step in just blocking the tip instead of having to block anything else because luckily for us pillboxes don't have a brim which is good because I don't have a brim block currently. I need to work on that but it is quite an investment so. But because I'll be blocking that hat tip and it needs to dry overnight we better go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. All right, here we are. As you can see, I have some hat canvas or buckram here. This is actually a rather stiff, uh, like hardy hat canvas, and I prefer this stuff. I haven't been able to find it lately. And I have a plastic shopping bag from the grocery store here to cover my wooden hat block. This is a little wooden pillbox shaped hat block. The shape of the hat in the end that we will get as well. I'm going to use this plastic grocery bag just to protect the hat block from all of the sizing that is actually in this buckram material. This buckram material is like cotton threads, thicker cotton threads in a plain weave, and then it has a lot of like gluey sizing on it. So as soon as I get it wet with that spray bottle here, it will be sticky and malleable. And then I can, I can shape it onto this hat block. And then once it dries, it will be in the shape we need. So that's kind of the principle behind how all this works. I just wanted to cover my hat block here so it doesn't get all gummed up and gross. So here I have a square of buckram that's bigger than my hat block. And I'm going to get that wet a little bit here with just some plain water and a spray bottle so I can cover my hat block and it, it's going to get your sizing on your hands and all kinds of stuff. So here I have some steel pins. Um, I will put the exact ones um, because these are a bit uh, star uh, sturdier or hardy pins than normal sewing pins um, and I'm going to use my fingers pinching the pin like this with a thimble to press these pins into the hat block. I'm going to start by pinning this piece on the bias so I'm starting with one pin up here at the top. You can see this is on the 45 degree angle. And so it has this little bit of stretch. When you pull it like that, it should have this little bend in the middle. That way you're pulling it taut. Now, sticking these pins, even with a thimble, into the wooden of the hat block is difficult, especially when you're trying to do it for camera. Um, I remember in hat making class, a lot of times my teacher would recommend holding the block like right up to your body on the other side. So you have the leverage to push these pins into the wood because it, it is difficult. This is the this is the part of millinery that requires a little bit of extra strength. Um, it's less about, well, it's slightly about just dexterity, but more about actual hand strength. Um, so you're just pushing these pins into the wood. You try and push them uh, almost pointing upwards a little bit so that they're at a 45 degree angle to the table. Um, I'm not very good at getting mine at the perfect 45 degree angle. A lot of times mine are perpendicular to the block, um, but you are supposed to kind of face them upwards towards, um, or I guess, the pin points downwards when you're done, but like pointing it up, poking it up into the wood, as it were. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. Um, again, the buckram itself is damp, moist, wet here, um, and so that is what's allowing it to shape and form around the corner of the tip of the hat here. I guess we can call it the corner. What would you call that? I, don't know, I guess the tip of the hat, yeah. Um, we're just, I'm pressing these pins in, by the way, I haven't mentioned, about a centimeter down or half inch down from the tip of the hat. So I want to block that entire tip area nice and smooth. So you can see here, I'm putting them in about a centimeter down. If my buckram is being annoying, I'll put one lower down just to hold it out of the way. But I'm not using this to block the entire shape of the hat, I'm just blocking the tip. So I only need to put these about a centimeter down and that is where we will cut off the excess later. So stretching this buckram down over the edge of the tip here and then pinning everything in place. Um, as you saw, I pinned the front and back on the bias, then the other two corners, and then I just start filling in. So I pin the four corners first, corners, again, of a circle, you know what I mean, the four um, sides of the circle, and then I fill in with pins 
in between like so, just to make sure that everything stays smooth and nice. And uh, again, your hands and the pins and everything's gonna get sticky from the sizing on this, but once it's all pinned and all smooth and nice and taut, like a drum almost, you can set it aside to dry. Now I said overnight, but actually it was 100 degrees out, so I just set this outside in the sun and in a couple hours I was good to go. Um, but if you are in a humid place um, or things, like if your laundry doesn't dry quickly, then your hat block won't either. You could also hit this with a uh, blow dryer if you wanted to, but just don't melt this plastic bag. But here I'm taking the plastic bag off in order to slide this blocked tip off of the hat and it fits right back on the block there. And I will go ahead and again trim down right that centimeter down where I had pinned everything. I will trim off all this excess below that. So we just have our nice smooth blocked hat tip now. Woohoo! Like so. And I can throw this excess away and this fits right back on the block and then I can start constructing the band for this hat. I think a lot of times they recommend cutting the band on the bias. I've actually never done it that way. I've only ever cut them on the straight grain. I don't know why that is what's in my brain um, to do on the straight grain, but I've never had any trouble doing it that way. So I think for when you're not black blocking the band, it seems perfectly serviceable to use the straight grain. So I've just cut a strip of buckram that is uh, two inches wide and a little bit too long as you saw, so I had to trim it down. But I'm just using the block as a way to size this. So I'm holding this at tension around the block and then I'm sliding it off while still holding that tension so I have the exact right size. And then here I'm just using some doubled polyester thread on a millinery needle to throw a line of backstitching in here down the middle of the overlap just to hold this band together. So I'm just doing a line of backstitching here and then I will um, go ahead and do another line of stitching around this uh, overlap as well, but just this first line of backstitching to secure everything. Again, this is just doubled polyester thread on a millinery needle. I will link to these needles below as well. These are just Dritz needles, um, so they're not super fancy anyway, and I will use this same needle to make this entire hat, honestly, um, which I'm sure is not the superficial way to do things, but as you will see, it worked out just fine. So the only problem with working with buckram like this too is that because the edges are kind of not like sharp, but like have burrs on them, they're quite stiff. Uh, your thread will get caught in them all the time, so that is slightly irritating. But I'll just tie this off now that I've secured my overlap with some backstitching and then just some regular stitching over the overlap itself. And this fits right back on my block. And now I have to make this band fit inside this hat tip. Now this hat tip is a little bit too small for the band to fit inside of it because uh, the size of the band isn't accounted for, but that just means it'll hold it at the exact right tension. So I'm just gonna fit this in here and like kind of, uh, smoosh it until everything fits nicely. Um, so it's technically the band in here is a little bit too big, I guess, but it will work once you, especially if you slide it back onto the block like that and judge it around a bit. And then here I'm just pinning up again at like a 45 degree angle through the corner of the hat tip and holding the band on. Hopefully you can see what I mean here. Pinning up from the band side up into the tip, I guess. And then I will go ahead and start stitching the band and tip together. Again, I'm just using spaced backstitch for this around the top here. I'm just stitching the tip and the band together. And a lot of times you'll see recommended or suggested for cut and sew buck or millinery like this to wire this top edge as well. I haven't found it necessary for my own hats just because I'm pretty gentle on my hats. So, um, but if you're rough and tumble on things, you might want to wire this top edge as well. Um, mine, I feel like this is sturdy enough as long as you're not gonna like sit on the hat. And if you're gonna sit on the hat, it doesn't matter if it's wider or if they're not, it's gonna get ruined. But now this edge and this overlap here is actually kind of rough. And there's a way to smooth this out, a trick I learned in millinery class. And that's to take it over to the ironing table, take some water and just run your finger over the um, like seam, I suppose, between the two. And then hit that with the heat of the iron and like have kind of pressed down. This is where, again, it's nice to have a stiff hat block in here. Cause you can press with the iron and a little bit of water, again, just activates that sizing, the kind of glue that's in this material, and it will um, help smoosh everything together properly. Again, me with my technical terms like floopy and smoosh. But yeah, like just kind of use the iron and a little bit of water to coax these two things together. And then you can still see the seam here, but uh, underneath the finger, it's very, very smooth after you do this. Um, so the rough cut edge of the seam pretty much disappears once you do this kind of burnishing with the iron and a little bit of water. Crystal dish for the water, by the way, is optional. Now we have basically our pillbox hat coming together here, but we're going to wire the bottom edge here. So I'm just going to take some millinery wire and find it a good size here. I'm just going to cut this with a little bit of overlap and then I will size it properly inside the hat here. 
So this I'm going to overlap about an inch and a half, I guess. But I'm just fitting it into the hat and like kind of releasing the spring of it so that it becomes the exact right size, uh, holding tension along this bottom band here. And you can see I actually used a bead stopper to hold that in place. And then to connect these wires, I'm just going to wrap, and I've sped it up a ton, because I'm just wrapping the wires together with thread and like tying it off. So I'm just using the thread to wrap the two together at the correct size, like so. And then I will just play with the edge of my buckram that's coming apart a tiny bit. Stay in place. All right, so then I can go ahead and have this wire ring inside here um, and it's it's perfectly fitted so I kind of have to slip it in there and then slide it up to the top because it's held at tension because it's exactly the right size if not a tiny bit too big so that it just holds tension along the edge here and then I'm just using a uh, blanket stitch to stitch all the way around this my stitches are about again a centimeter long for this I'm just stitching this wire to the edge and wiring the whole edge of this all this stuff will eventually be covered with fabric, of course, and not seen. And today I'll be covering my hat with velvet, which, funny enough, because I always say that velvet is one of the more, if not one of the most, irritating fabrics to sew clothing with ever. But it's actually super useful to make hats with, especially something like this, because the stitches get lost in it so easily. So you can do pr quite rough stitching, and no one will ever know because it just disappears into the pile of the velvet, especially with a textured velvet like this one. Now, I'm sorry, this fabric is very, very fun, and I can't tell you where to get any more. I picked up this fabric at Allen's um, here in Denver, but I picked it up about a decade ago. So this is leftovers and actually from a dress that I took apart. So I'm sorry, I don't know where to find velvet this cute. Um, it's just polyester, but it is very pretty. I think it's a poly rayon blend, actually. The pile feels like rayon. So again, I'm putting this onto the hat tip bias first. So here you see I'm pinning my four corners again, pinning two bias um, edges where it stretched a little bit. And then in between, like so, um, just using the stretch inherent in the 45 degree angle of a woven fabric, aka bias, to make sure that this is taut along the top and then just pinning in between, holding tension. You can see I'm pulling with my left hand as I pin with my right to make sure that this is at a slight tension around the edge here. And I'm just pinning through that corner again. You see me do that a lot. And then again, I'm just taking some doubled thread on that same millinery needle once again, and I will stitch this uh, down to the buckram base through uh, probably like a quarter of an inch down from the tip. So it's hard to see here because of course, black velvet, um, black on black with black thread here. At least it was easier to see my stitches, black stitches against the white buckram, but now black on black, there's no way. But I am just stitching this down with a like stab stitch, I believe it's called, where you take a tiny stitch on the outside and then a little bit of a larger stitch on the inside. Again, probably like a quarter of an inch is best. I think I might slide up to about a centimeter long stitch here, but I'm just actually just taking a stab stitch around this edge here. And uh, a lot of times you'll see me like this here, I'm using a back stitch. They recommend using a stab stitch. I'm kind of doing a stab stitch back stitch combo. So I'm taking the small stitch on the outside, long stitch on the inside, but I am doing it as a back stitch just for extra security, I guess. Sometimes again, I don't know why I do the things I do, but if it works, I find it hard to question later. <clears throat> and now that that's on there, I will go ahead and trim off the extra fabric here. Just leaving about a centimeter overlap down that edge below my stitching. So now the top of my hat is covered and I can cover the band. Um, so I'm just rolling this along fabric to, along the fabric to see how long I need to cut a strip. And this of course has like a hemmed edge on it because this piece of fabric used to be a dress and I took that dress apart to use the fabric for something else. But um, I'm just gonna cut a strip that's about four inches wide even though my hat is only about two inches because I want to be able to fold the excess into the inside along the bottom edge. So you'll see that in a minute, but I'm folding this top edge down about five eighths. I'm just pinning that roughly here, like so. And I'm going to start back here at the overlap and just start pinning this down to the other piece of velvet that's on here. Again, I'm pinning down from the tip into the band as you keep seeing me do. And again, it's hard to see what the heck is going on with black velvet. I don't know. I mean, black velvet is very easy to use for hats. I quite like it. Again, your stitches totally disappear in it, but it's not very good for video making because showing the detail of a sewing project in black velvet in video form is not great. And in fact, I have a lot for the rest of this. I have a lot of this, the exposure turned up really high on the camera. So the footage isn't gorgeous, but I'm trying to be able to show any detail in this black velvet, of course. But you can see I'm just wrapping that um, 
folded edge around the top of the tip, just about, I don't know, a couple millimeters down from the actual tip edge. And I'm holding that at some tension and pinning along. And then when I get to this other side, I'll cut off the excess and then fold this edge underneath as well for a nice clean finish and pin it into place so that we can start sewing the uh, covering for the band here on. Now you could also have uh, put like a layer of interfacing underneath. Let's say you were using like a silk taffeta and you were worried about the texture of the buckram itself showing through a thinner fabric. Um, you could use like some fusible interfacing and again, slip this back onto the hat block. We'd have to do this before you wired that bottom edge because once you wire that bottom edge, it doesn't fit on the hat block anymore. But um, you could slip this back on the hat block and use some interfacing and iron it on to give the buckram a smoother surface if you were going to use a smoother finished fat, uh, fabric on the outside. Because like if you put like a thin uh, like silk uh, crepe satin or like a taffeta over just the buckram, you might want another layer underneath. You could also possibly cover the hat using like um, flat lining it with a piece of, piece of muslin in between the taffeta and the buckram as well. That would probably work as well too. Um, again, these aren't official recommendations. I am not a fully trained milliner, but this is just how I would get around those sort of things. And like, of course, if you're using a s smooth silk, you'll have to make your stitches more even and clean. But with a black velvet, again, they just disappear. And the way I'm affixing these things together here is I'm just slip stitching the fabric of the hat that is already like attached to the hat. So I'm taking a stitch out of the black velvet we used to cover the tip. And then I'm going to take a stitch out of the top folded edge of the band. Um, so I'm just slip stitching this together like you would close up a pillow or anything like that. Or slip stitch anything shut, I suppose. But just taking a stitch out of the hat tip here into the velvet. I'm not taking uh, stitching through the buckram at all at this point. I'm just stitching through the velvet that's already attached to the hat and therefore is steady and secure. And then this top folded edge of the band fabric, like so. So this would be invisible no matter what fabric you were using, hopefully. Um, the smoother your silk you would have to, or the fabric you were using to cover a hat, the smaller your stitches would have to be so that they didn't like pucker and show anything. But again, I recommend almost, it's so strange to recommend velvet to a beginner because what a wild idea. But if you're beginner hat making, black velvet, not a bad idea. <laughs> it really hides all sins. And it happens to be some, one of my favorite fabrics for accessories or clothes or anything. Much easier to sew with velvet for hats than for clothes, my goodness, by far. And then for this uh, back seam here, I'm actually just going to fell this um, just because I knew it would be invisible. You could slip stitch it if you were worried about the stitches showing, but I'm just not worried about my stitches showing in this at all in this figured velvet. This down by felling it. I'm glad I still have a little bit of this velvet left because it is just so fun. I should learn to make a clutch or something out of it, uh, some sort of a handbag to match these velvet hats I have now, or just save it for another hat on another day because, you know, these are very versatile, these little black pillboxes. Once I get to the bottom edge, again, I'm just folding all this excess to the inside of the hat here, and then I'm going to do a little, again, line of stab stitching along, right above like the wire along the bottom edge of this, just to hold this in place hold it at tension. Again, um, you just want to smooth everything, not so that it's too tight, like you're not pulling on it, but just smooth everything so it's taut against the buckram hat frame. But again, I'm just backstitch, stab stitching this all the way around the bottom edge, just so that it holds itself smooth. Again, uh, on a hat where you would be then attaching this onto a brim, uh, these would usually be covered by a head ribbon like a, or a, a hat ribbon around the outside or trimmings and things like that. So these stitches no wouldn't normally be seen if you were attaching this to a brim, but if you're doing a pillbox like this and you're not going to be trimming over it, these stitches would kind of be seen. And sometimes you can just glue the fabric to the inside. Um, that's another option, but I'm not very hip to the jive on millinery glues. I don't really know how to use any of that stuff. I just know how to do it by stitching it instead. So here I've just taken a piece of vintage millinery veiling. It's not really sturdy enough to wear as veiling like down over the face anymore. So I, I'm just using it almost like as ribbon trim here. And I'm just wrapping it around the pillbox and zhuzhing it the way I like. Again, more technical terms from me. And I'm pinning it in place. I've just wrapped it around um, and then wrapped a little bit of extra over the top. I found this piece of vintage millinery uh, ribbon, millinery ribbon, millinery veiling out at the antique mall, actually, recently. And uh, 
I said, yes, thank you. I'll take that. No problem. So it was $6 for this little piece of vintage millinery um, chenille dotted veiling. And I thought that was quite the deal because you can never find this for $6 a yard anymore, especially with multicolored pastel and pink uh, polka dot chenille dots on here. And these little chenille dots are basically tiny pieces of pipe cleaners that have been folded like almost like a staple into the veiling. So you can move them around and then you'll see me do that in just a moment. But here, once I have it pinned how I liked, I went and go, went to go try it on my head and see if I liked the way the veiling was arranged. And once I had everything pinned the way I liked, now I'm just throwing little stitches in here to hold things in place, uh, almost like tailor stacks. I'm just throwing little tiny stitches wherever I need a stitch to hold this down. Um, I'm not even um, putting a ton in. I'm just anywhere I have a pin to hold it, I'm going to put a little stitch in. Um, so I'm just stitching through the entire base here. The inside is not lined yet. And it's good to do your trimming before you line the thing because then the stitches are all hidden by the lining later. So I've just trimmed this quite simply today with this piece of veiling. I thought about adding other things, but then I decided I wanted to keep things a little bit more simple. But because the veiling has these chenille dots in kind of like a line, when you scrunch it up like this, they end up very clustered. So I wanted to unfold a couple of the chenille dots and uh, fold them somewhere else so I can space out my polka dots a little bit more. So you can just kind of unfold these. Again, they're folded almost like a staple and then you can just pinch them back where you want them instead. So here I am re-pinching a few of my chenille dots around for some more evenly spaced polka dotage situation going on here. I just love the colors of this. It's like chartreuse, fuchsia, light softest gray pink, and light blue. So cute. I mean, of course, these are like literally the exact same colors as the other, the feather topped one I have like this, but you know, oh well, how many hats in black and pastel does one gal need? Again, a ton. Here I have a hat elastic, that's what I'm gonna to use today to be able to secure this hat to my head, but you could also use like quarter inch elastic like this, and then also just create small loops that you attach the hat, and then you can attach a head ribbon like, or a hat elastic like this one, or use bobby pins um, on those little loops. So little loops are another option here. Now to line this hat, I'm just taking a spare piece of cotton voile I had laying around. You could line it with whatever fabric you wanted, but uh, that's just what I had nearby in my scrap pile. And I thought it would work well for this because of course the lining will never really be seen. So I'm just taking a band and a circle that is, uh, I traced the hat block on that circle. That's the yellow line on there, you can see. So I just have a circle of the voile and then the same hat band size again. I'm just finger pressing this after I stitched this closed. And then I will pin this around the circle just to create like a little tiny circular bag to stick inside my hat as the lining. So I'll just pin this along the edge of the circle here, and I'll sew this with half inch seam allowance. And uh, you can pin this like, um, and then I realized I didn't want the colored pencil to show, so I flipped this around. You can find the center of this and pin it like across the circle and like pin your way around, but I just, it's just the lining. So if it comes off a little bit skewed, I really don't care. Most of the time, in the past, I've been known to just skip lining my hats because the only one who would ever know would be me. But today I'll be good and I will line my hat and so I'm going to take this over to the machine here and sew this together. That way we can use this little lining like so. so. Let's go stitch this on the machine. Most of this hat was hand sewn today, but uh, a little bit of machine stitching here for the lining. I don't know if I could sew much hat nonsense on this machine because as you can see, like. There's no way to like t take the like end of the machine off like there isn't a modern machine where you can like stick the sleeve around the edge something like that. So it's a little bit less versatile for sewing 3D things, uh, I guess like hats or stuffed animals and stuff like that. This machine would be harder to use for something like that. But now that that's sewn together, take all my pins out. I'm not even going to clip this curve. Shocking. It's just going to be the lining. It's going to be fine. I'm just folding over this top edge of this about five eighths of inch, or a little more than a half inch, just because I cut this kind of wide, and just finger pressing that with my fingernail and setting it inside the hat, like so. Magic. And then I'm just going to pin this, again with these fine silk pins, along the edge here. I'm sorry this uh, angle is not the best for seeing what's happening here, but I'm just pinning that folded edge of the lining to right beneath, again, the hat wire that's in here. Um, that wired edge inside underneath the velvet. I'm just pinning this right 
along that area. And then I will go ahead and fill this lining down just along the inside edge where it will from now on never be seen. But we will all know that I did the due diligence to line this hat right. I never do, so. <laughs> just because it's, it's one of those instances where filming a project and making it for camera means I made it a little bit nicer than I may have done just for myself, which is good. It encourages me to do even nicer work when I have to share it with other people. <laughs> so thank you all for being here and making me make nicer hats. In fact, I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to finish so well that I'm going to actually sew a label in here because I normally skip this as well. So <laughs> here I'm actually sewing in a Closet Historian B label into this as well. These labels um, are cloth woven labels from um, Dutch label shop. So if you ever want labels like this, I highly recommend them. I've worked with them a little bit in the past. Um, it's not sponsored. They just sent me free labels to mention them on Instagram. And so uh, it's not technically, I don't think, sponsored, I guess. But uh, they gave me a discount code before in the past. So I feel like I should probably disclose that. Um, but they are really great labels. And I quite like them a lot. The quality seems great. So I recommend them. And I'm just going to sew this ends of this hat elastic on here. You can buy hat elastics like this from millinery shops, or of course just buy very thin elastic like this and use it in this way. Um, but they do have like prepared hat elastics like this with these little tabs on the end, which again are good for like sticking through little loops on a hat as well if you want the hat elastic to be removable. But I'm just stitching this on here in a more permanent fashion, just looping a couple of stitches on each side so that I can wear this hat very securely. But that's the last step for this one. You could also stitch a comb in here or a clip, but there's my hat. And here it is with a black 1940s suit, which of course it is actually, again, like I said, 98 degrees here, so I can't wear a suit out right about now. If I had a linen suit, perhaps, but I think this looks great for day wear, don't you think? Compared to that feathery option that I had made last time in my other hat making video. And uh, I had a couple of people mention to me that I wasn't making hats, I was making fascinators, which yeah, kind of technically. The definition between a hat and a fascinator seems loose at best. And actually the word fascinator didn't really come into prominence to talk about small hats until it seems like the 1990s when you start looking into the etymology. So I think small hats just used to be called s small hats, you know? <clears throat> I've had to switch jackets just because I was melting in that wool suit with the lights in the summertime. Not, not really preferable. So I hope you all enjoyed seeing how this little hat came together today. This little like mini pillbox thing. I'm actually happy that this one, you can actually see the pattern of the velvet a little bit more because of course the other version of this that I have is covered in feathers like that. And this one is a little bit more wearable. I'm really actually quite pleased with how it came out. I wasn't sure earlier I was finishing it up and I was like, is this gonna be enough? And I think the other one is over the top enough and this one is a nice kind of day wear version. This one during the daytime, and the feathery one perhaps at night. Thank you as always for watching today and I'll be back here with more sewing in vintage fashion real soon. Bye.